An interesting but little used feature of Outlook is something called the journal. Now the journal is not something you're going to see immediately here in the navigation view. There isn't actually an icon set up for it down here by default, but you can get to it in a couple of places. You can definitely go to your folder list and you'll see your journal available right here within the folder list. You can also, if the journal is something you wish to use, you can get to it by adding the button. So if I click on the drop down arrow at the very bottom of my navigation pane, I have the ability to go to add or remove buttons. You're going to see highlighted in the background with orange are all of the icons that are currently running on my navigation bar here. The journal is not, but if I click on that, I can add it. So if you do intend on using the journal, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and add that button. So let me go ahead and take you into the journal so I can explain to you a little bit about what it does and then you can decide for yourself if it's something that's going to be helpful. So the first thing I'm going to get is a, is a little, um, not really a warning, but more of a statement. Basically the journal is letting me know that it can automatically track Microsoft Office documents and email message associated with a contact. And it's asking me if I want to turn the journal on, okay, because the journal is going to start this automatic tracking for me if I actually turn it on. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And then I'm going to get this screen that's going to offer me some options. So let me explain to you in more detail at this juncture, juncture exactly what your journal is going to do. It is in essence a log of the key activities you perform on your computer. So by that I mean it can log automatically the activities you see in this first panel here in this dialog box for the contacts you see over here on the right. And these are the contacts that are coming from your contacts folder. So you want to make sure that you actually have updated your contacts folder before you come in here. Or if you add someone new to your contacts folder, you want to be able to come back in here and uh, go ahead and make these associations. Okay? So essentially, what I can do is I can say, let's track email messages, meeting requests, task requests, and let's just do those for these particular contacts. We'll do Gail and Jeff and Joe. We'll do it for myself, a couple of other people. Okay. So now what's going to happen is when I perform one of these tasks in association with one of these people, a little marker, a record of that activity is going to fall into my journal. And then I have the ability to come in and review those activities in my journal to see what I did on any one given day. It's also another way for you to be able to keep an archive or a history of the work that you've done. Now, in addition to being able to track just what goes on in Outlook, I can also attract, I can also track the activities I perform with certain Office applications. So you can see down here, I have the ability to track the work that I do in Access, Excel, PowerPoint, and Word. So let's say I want to track my Word documents. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. I'm not going to do the others, but I could turn them all on if I wanted to. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now you're not going to see really, whoops, just do this quickly. You're not going to actually see anything pop up, just get rid of that. You're not going to see anything pop up here in the journal um, right out of the gate. Okay, that's not something that you'll see. You'll actually have to begin working once the journal is turned on in order to see some action here. So let me go ahead and I'm going to leave the journal for a second. I'm going to go send a couple of emails and I'm going to open up a Word document. Then we're going to come back and we're going to see what's happened here. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to quickly just compose a new message. Okay, I'm not even going to put anything in it. I'm just going to send it quickly. We'll do another one. <clears throat> I'm going to send this to myself. And we'll send it to one other person. Okay, so I sent a couple of emails. Let me go ahead and I'm going to start Word. And I'm going to open up, a, open up something I worked on here before. Let's see here. Open up a simple document. We'll make a change. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then I'm going to close it. Okay, so you saw I did a couple of actions. I sent a couple of emails. I went ahead and I opened up a Word document. I made some changes to it. Let's go see what happened here in my journal. 
So now, before we had nothing in the journal, but if you look now, you actually can see that here on today's date, okay, and it also is a timeline, so it's about midday right now, that's why you can see the activities are falling midway between the Tuesday and the Wednesday mark. You can see that, here's the file, I'm going to just scroll a little bit this way so we can see it more clearly. You can see the file, it's going to give me the path and the file name for the document I worked on. And you can also see the actions that were performed here in association with these key contacts. I was able to send them a couple of messages and it tracked them here. Now if they respond to me, that information also will get tracked here. So hopefully you can begin to see the value of the journal in that it's going to basically show me a record of all of the activity that I did in one given day. Okay? I can change the view. Right now I'm looking at it by contact. It's being grouped by contact. I could switch that to being grouped by type so that all of my mail messages and all of my office documents get grouped together. If I had tagged them with categories, we've already seen the benefit of categories, I'd be able to sort by category. None of these currently have categories associated with them. I can look at just a list. Okay, if, it, if, the, uh, if you've done a lot of actions in one given day, I don't know about you, but some days I send quite a lot of emails. If that's the case for you, you might actually prefer to look at it in a list format. The list format's a little bit easier to read um, and it can allow you to hopefully get more quickly to one key piece of information. You can also just look at the last few days. Now, last seven days isn't going to make a big change for me here because I just turned on the journal. But if I'd had it on over the last week, I'd be able to pare down the list to only the information or the things that I've worked on over the last seven days.